that was suffered back early in the season. He's basically missed about two years of basketball time, and so MTSU glad to be able to have him back on the floor. Chattanooga with Malachi Smith off the mark. And MTSU rebounds, and here come the Blue Raiders. Both of these teams, nine and three. The MTSU started off the season seven and one. They've gone two and two in their last four. Chattanooga has lost back-to-back -back games on the road. They lost at Belmont and at Murray State. Chris, for Chattanooga, two buildings that were very difficult to win in. Probably a good test helps get them here tonight. Josh Jefferson knocks down the three, and MTSU takes the early lead. Jefferson averaging 12 a game, shooting 31% from deep. He is a well-traveled graduate student. This is his third school that he's played at. He started out at Illinois State, then went to Green Bay, and now he's in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. Five or four on the shot clock. Here's Caldwell off the back of the rim and a long rebound out to Justin Buford. Looks like Chattanooga passed up several looks on that offensive possession. Three nothing lead for MTSU. Still early here, first quarter. Also should point out, bit of a change in the starting lineup tonight. Malachi Smith with the bucket. Hankton not getting the start. Caldwell getting the start. A.J. Caldwell, a player that knows the system well. And for Hankton, maybe just an opportunity to feel a little bit more comfortable coming off the bench. He's had a couple of games where he's had some underperformances. Maybe this will help. Donovan Sims off the mark. Yeah, Casey Hankton did not score in Chattanooga's loss to Murray State. Mox lost the last time out, 87-76. Murray State hit 11 three-pointers in that game, and Chattanooga did themselves no favor with 14 turnovers in that game. Haven't reset the shot clock yet here. I give them a new 20 seconds. And I, I like it when a team like the Blue Raiders come out and establish our keys to the game early. I mean, they have already thrown it up from behind that three-point line a couple Dishman of times. on the feed to Buford, and he missed the layup. So that is a combination that they've worked before. And you saw the high-flying Buford, a guy that can really elevate. David Jean Baptiste went down, draws the foul. So go on Josh Jefferson, his first personal, first team foul. Malachi Smith will inbound it to David Jean Baptiste. Baptiste guarded by Buford. I think that bump right there could be an indication of how it's going to be called tonight. Could be a physical evening. DeSosa off the mark. So DeSosa came out early and put a lot of time into his practice from behind the arc. Banks goes on the drive, and there's a charge called against MTSU. Second team foul. This will go on Eli Lawrence picking up his first personal. 67th meeting between these two programs. Chattanooga leads at all time. 34 wins for the Mox, 32 for MTSU. This is the first time MTSU has been to Chattanooga since November the 24th, 1997. So while they've played 67 times as Banks releases from deep to Sosa rebounds, a lot of those matchups have not come here in the last 20 or so years, stolen away by Jefferson. Boy, Dishman had fantastic defensive position on DeSosa. Dishman with a beautiful pass, and there's the dunk. Tiafiel Leonard, his 14th dunk of the season, 6'7 junior. Stuffed home a couple of alley-oops the other day. We talked about high flyers already. You can see the length on this Middle Tennessee State team. Caldwell's three, rims out. One look, and that's it for Chattanooga. 5-2 lead for MTSU. Blue Raiders with an opportunity to build. And there's Dishman. 
And the lead for MTSU goes to five as we've played about four minutes in this first half. And Dishman, what a story he is. He had a knee surgery when they played two years ago. Baptiste with a three. And it's a two-point game now, seven to five. But Dishman went up for a rebound, came down, tore his ACL, MCL, PCL, LCL, and his meniscus. Took him about 18 months to come back from that, and they say that he's still not as explosive as he was before the injury. Sims to the rim, has it partially blocked and out of bounds. May not be as explosive, but he and Jones provide a wonderful combination and presence down low. And we'll see Jones hey, match up against each other pretty well. MTSU averaging 14 turnovers a game. Chattanooga just over 10 a game. Both of them scored around 78 points per game. MTSU coming off a rough year last year, Todd. They were 5-18 and 18 last year, went 3-13 and 13 in Conference USA. They were picked last yep. in the Conference USA preseason poll. Four, were, yeah. yeah, 14 out of 14. Four, yes. <laughs> you know where to go but up. Ieni with the turnaround. And we're tied at 7. A couple of changes for Chattanooga. Ianni being one of them. Walker, Jamal Walker has checked into the game. There's the feed underneath to Leonard. We saw the dunk earlier. Well, they gotten off to a good start on these pick and rolls. They have hit the cutter to the basket and they've been rewarded. Here is Walker. Walker goes up and lost it. Now, Walker's a guy that can match up athletically. Buford guarded by Walker. Takes into the rim, partially blocked by Jamal Walker. Hey, if it, if it works on one end, it ought to work on the other end. I think that's the feeling Jamal Walker has right now. Walker, a Chattanooga product, went to East Hamilton High School. Coming off a five-point, two-rebound, one-assist game against Murray State in that 87-76 loss for Chattanooga. Watch Malachi Smith tonight on how he protects the basketball. He is aware that Middle Tennessee State does two things really well, shoot the three and force the turnovers. Hankton turns, short on the jumper. And Ieni with a rebound. Back inside again to Hankton. Once more a miss. And a turnover by MTSU. Tyler Millen not able to catch up with the pass from Donovan Sims in time. Chris, I was wondering about Middle Tennessee State when the season got started. And you mentioned them being picked 14 out of 14. Look, they got five transfers on this team and it takes a while to get that all together. You mentioned not being very successful a year ago. Uh, this, this crowd, the fan base at Middle Tennessee State got awfully spoiled by Kermit Davis who had one losing season in 16 years. And now they feel like they're in a bit of a drought. Caldwell, baseline. Caldwell recognizes that nobody's going to pick him up. Look, if they drive you wide, you're thinking the baseline's going to be cut off, but nobody flashes down defensively. And he takes advantage of that. Weston tries to make the pass inside. Wanted to drop it off to Christian Fussell. And it's off Fussell's fingertips and out of bounds. Opportunity for Chattanooga to be able to take a lead in this game. Mox have trailed the whole way. MTSU led by as many as five early. Chattanooga's tied it here at nine to nine. Walker to Baptiste. That's almost been two minutes now since the Blue Raiders have posted any points. Uh, Any steps out of bounds, that'll turn it over. It's <laughs> <That, that>, uh, <laughs> gonna make the official reach for the ball. Chris,
Chris Chetanik is already, I mean, they have, they've gone mining on that bench. Yes, they have. They have, after a slow start, Mox trailed it seven to two. They were one of six shooting from the floor. And going high off the glass is Cameron Weston. And at they, MTSU back in front by a pair. They've experimented with Ianni and Walker and Hankton coming in and now Diggs playing. Walker. Stolen away, Weston with a steal. Ahead to Mullen, Mullen to the rim. And the lead goes to four at 13-9. You know, you have to wonder how those games at Belmont and Murray State affected this Chattanooga club. Did it shake their confidence a little bit? Hankton. KC Hankton cuts the lead down to two for MTSU. Blue Raiders with the ball, tapped away by Walker. Lawrence, the three, rolls off the front of the rim. There's Fussell to rebound it. And a new shot clock for the Blue Raiders. Uh, Fussell, a three-star product. You can see why Georgia Tech offered him an opportunity. Fussell found himself all alone underneath. He didn't take that one. Stayed out of the ACC like Middle Tennessee State. Well, and he matches up nicely against Diggs. Digs a little bit bigger though. Here we go. Caldwell, got it. A.J. Caldwell, a 27% shooter from three. Makes it a one point game at 15-14. Weston. The step back, and he knocks it down. Weston, another player they've invested in. They knew he was a capable quarterback, if you will. He, he knew how to handle the ball, knew who to get it to. About an average score, but that's a nice jumper for him. Jamal Walker's shot is missed, and the Blue Raiders have it on the run again. It's Jefferson going coast to coast before. Turning over rosters, finding players, they kind of meet up with his system. And I'm really enjoying how athletic they've been. Josh Jefferson hits from three and the lead goes to six. Biggest lead of the game for MTSU as we rolled just under 10 minutes to play in the first half. And again, Jefferson was a prize get. Smith against the double team and draws the contact. Yeah, Jefferson can be a little prone to some lapses. But I, I really do think that when they got him, they felt like they had a player that could elevate this program and get it out of the basement. Chattanooga won this meeting last year, 80 to 70. And again, as we mentioned earlier, this is the first time MTSU has played in Chattanooga since November the 24th of 1997. Been a while since they made the trip down I-24. Traffic's still a mess. <laughs> and Mac Malachi Smith. Look, I don't blame him. I don't cross the time zone unless I have to. <laughs> <laughs> Five point lead for MTSU, nine and a half remaining in the first half. Here's Jefferson again, Leonard. Back to Dishman, has it blocked by DeSosa. And a nice defensive stand for Chattanooga. DeSosa has figured out it's gonna be a physical tonight. He's gonna to rise to the challenge here. The question is a little too physical offensively. Charge called on Silvio DeSosa. And the Kansas transfer will turn it over. You know, officially, Chris, they only have him with one rebound, but I think they're going to make some adjustments on that. 
I've seen him pull down at least three. Weston off balance and Grant Ledford rebounds for Chattanooga. So Lamont Paris has gone up and down the bench tonight for Chattanooga. Mox have played a lot here in this first half already, trying to find the right combination. MTSU's led the whole way. 20 to 15 with a the lead. There's a tip and the ball goes out of bounds on the pass. Chattanooga will maintain possession. Message sent. That ball is not going to get it through the paint. Wing to wing on a pass like that. Five to shoot for Baptiste. Got it. David Jean Baptiste. He is second in Chattanooga history in terms of three point field goals made. And he is now two points away. Check that, he is now tied. Gerald Wilkins, Brandon Bourne, and Walter Moose McGarry for number six all time in scoring at UTC. So the next bucket for David Jean Baptiste will put him in the top five in Chattanooga history. As Smith lost it on his way up, they'll say the ball was out of bounds and last touch by Smith. Now we mentioned at the start of the broadcast, the return he gives you for the minutes, what I failed to mention was that sometimes it can come like a gold rush. Weston goes high off the glass. Cameron Weston, the sophomore out of Albany, Georgia. And the lead goes back to seven at 24-17. The MTSU equaling their biggest lead. Here's the feed to DeSosa. And Leonard was able to get a hand on it. And DeSosa returns the favor, deflecting a pass. Ledford to the rim, and he has it. Every now and then. David Jean Baptiste goes to the line. He's an 89% free throw shooter. And there it comes. David Jean Baptiste has entered the top five all time in scoring at Chattanooga with that free throw. Baptiste hits both free throws. He's got seven. And the lead is trimmed to five. Chattanooga will maintain possession. Mox will get the ball. Part of the difference in this game that we've seen so far, Todd, has been points in the paint. MTSU doubling up Chattanooga so far. 16 to eight on the inside. Yeah, I mean, they have really hit the cutters tonight. They've penetrated with their dribbles. Baptiste got it. Five points on that possession for David Jean Baptiste. The two free throws and the three pointer. He's in double figures with 10. And Chattanooga's trimmed this to a two point game at 24 22. Now we've talked about the changes. Here's the oop. And then the nice job to step in front of it by Banks and tip it away. Now we talked about the number of players for Chattanooga and knowing Lamont Paris, he makes defensive changes, not offensive changes. And so the game, you think coming into this game, you're gonna play a team that's just gonna start bombing from behind the arc. And Middle Tennessee State has changed it up. They look much more like an interior team. And so you have to match up to that. Pass intended for DeSosa from Banks. Sales out of bounds, MTSU shooting 31% entering play tonight from three-point range. Now, so far, they've hit only two of four, but again, they have done their damage from in the paint against Chattanooga. Leonard tried to lob it into Dishman. Leonard able to get it back off the tip. Good hustle by Leonard. Jefferson. And we'll get a whistle and a foul called on Chattanooga. Ooh, that could be DeSosa's second. See what kind of position he had and where he was on the floor here. Foul goes against Grant Ledford. That's oh, his first. Well, all right. A little bit before DeSosa got involved in the play. So Josh Jefferson, a 93% foul shooter. 
you're a Blue Raider, this is the guy you want to see at the line. Barry's the first. Six times this season, Jefferson has led MTSU in scoring from New Albany, Indiana. Went 27-1 and one as a high school senior and led New Albany High School to their first state championship since 1973. Now we talked about his travels with stops at Illinois State and Green Bay before settling in Murfreesboro. As a graduate student coming off a 17-point performance in their last game, the win over Coastal Carolina, he's already got eight in this one. Here's Caldwell, and he lost it. Look out. Jefferson has it on the run, the breakaway, and he puts it up. That press seemed to rattle Chattanooga a little bit offensively, and they just did not get organized. Caldwell thought he was going to run it in and then got denied and mishandled it. Banks missed the layup, Dishman rebounds. Jefferson over Ieni. And the rebound by Malachi Smith. Malachi Smith, the reigning Southern Conference Player of the Week. With only three points so far, he had 36. Last time out for Chattanooga against Murray State in Ieni's shot. Goes off the back of the rim, and Donovan Sims will bring it into the front court. Buford pulls up from the free throw line, and he draws the foul. Malachi, speaking of Malachi Smith, he picks up his first personal foul, fourth team foul on Chattanooga. And Justin Buford goes to the line. Buford averaging four a game, a 71% foul shooter. He had a career high in MTSU's win over Coastal Carolina with 12 points. Buford out of Selma, Alabama, went to Shelton State Community College before transferring to MTSU. You mentioned all the newcomers they have, Todd. It seems like Coach Nick McDivitt has done a pretty good job in kind of melding this group together. Again, we referenced their 7-1 and one start to begin this season earlier, 2-2 two and two in, their, in their last four. It just feels like that is the way of the game. They had five, UAB had eight. Western Kentucky in the same league had six. And one of the new jobs of being a head coach at any sport now in college is going to be roster management. Baptiste with seven to shoot off the screen. Caldwell, open look, not there. And Banks tried with the putback. And we'll have a foul called. Banks didn't get a chance to soften the blow. He had a player underneath him. Elias Look, King called with a foul. Looked like on that action, Chattanooga picked up their tempo a little bit. This has been very good on the ball defense by Middle Tennessee State. Deny, deny, deny. Wow. Little hand check. Yeah. Keeping Josh Ianni. And that's Christian Fussell. First personal foul on him. That is team foul number seven on MTSU with four minutes to go in the first half. Chattanooga with the opportunity to shoot a couple of free throws now down the stretch. Josh Ianni, who is eight of ten on the year from the free throw line. You see Fussell right down there on the low block wearing number 15. His They've got him as a developmental project. He's a freshman. Imagine what happens if he spends 10 minutes in the gym. Yeah. I mean, that, that guy has got a frame. 
six foot 10, 215 pounds they, they list him. The number 35 center in the nation a year ago. So you get a look at Nick McDivitt on that MTSU sideline. But the thing about Fussell is he's not a guy that plays with his back to the basket. He is more of a guy that will play right. facing the rim and they want to see him be able to add some of those low post moves to his game and be able to play with his back to the basket. Five point lead for the Blue Raiders. Under four minutes to go in the first half. Open look for Baptiste. And the rebound by King. And then King has it deflected by Banks. Fussell. You're looking at a player right there in Malachi Smith. He's been good. Malachi Smith at the free throw line. The foul was called on Tiafael Leonard, his second personal foul. Smith can make it a three-point game. And he does. Three-point lead now for MTSU, 29-26. Fussell finds King in the corner. And Malachi Smith with a rebound. Nice job by Middle Tennessee State to reverse the ball action. Find an open shooter. Diggs will pick up the foul, wipe off the basket. They'll call the foul on Christian Fussell. Second personal foul. So Diggs is going to have to earn him at the free throw line, but one thing he learned on that is that he can push Fussell back a little bit. He kind of got a feel for what the officials will let him do with his size. I wouldn't be surprised if we see him try to execute that play again. Diggs a 62% foul shooter, averaging five a game. <laughs> Talked about the transfers that MTSU has. Chattanooga has a few as well, and Diggs, one of those, he comes to Chattanooga from the University of Central Florida. Uh, if he does get a chance to do that again, they have replaced Fussell with Dishman, who presents a much harder target to move around down low. You can see the two right there almost at the top of the screen. That'll be an interesting matchup. Here is Dishman. Will drive against Diggs now. Works to get open, tries to lay it up. Weston with the tip, That's and it. we've got a foul. Yeah. That was in the cylinder, I think. T grabbed the net, hit the net, shook the rim. I think Lamont is saying the ball had already cleared the rim when the hands got tangled up in the net. I still think it's a good call. Watch right here. Well, there's a guy we've seen lots of, Jefferson, today. And we've seen that look, too. <laughs> now they're going to wave it off. No basket, 29-26, two minutes left. Our officiating crew of Garrick Shannon, Davis Maxwell, and Darren Williams. Had to talk that one over. Nice job to get it done correctly. I like officials that will just hit the pause button and look at, we've got it. Give us a moment. <laughs> this will take a second. We'll figure it out. Diggs, the miss, the tip. Loose ball scooped up by Cameron Weston. And a missed opportunity there to make this a two-point game for a one-point game for Chattanooga. Dishman drives on Diggs. That may be a foul. 
Diggs got the block after the fact, but the foul will go on Dishman. Called with a charge, he, he put the elbow and the shoulder <laughs> and maybe half a rib into Avery Diggs. A little fight in this game tonight. And there's a guy right there, Dishman, we talked about his size. So now it's going to be DeSosa who checks in. You see him just a little bit right there in the screen. Well, Dishman was hard to handle last year for Chattanooga when these two teams played up in Murfreesboro. Dishman scored 16 in that game. Smith, the lob. Well, that'll wake up the Chattanooga crowd. Silvio DeSosa with a two-handed dunk. If you can get around the screen and go south with the dribble, that's what creates it. A lot of times you'll run into some resistance and you got to dribble out wide. You turn it into a north-south game and you can create that kind of interior presence. Boy, and DeSosa and, and uh, Dishman are really battling down low. Weston working against Smith. And a shot clock violation, they'll turn it over. And we'll get a foul called as well. So I think that's on Malachi Smith. And that is his and, second. And if it's on him, he's, you know, it doesn't help your it doesn't help your your cause when you're out of control defensively. And we'll see what happens here. The officials came over to us before the game and said we'll explain anything that um, could be confusing and I reminded that particular official that it all looks confusing to you and I. So feel free to stop by on a regular basis. <laughs> yeah, Malachi Smith is asking for an explanation. That's a good ask, and that's a good official right there. Cameron Weston goes to the free throw line. Weston, a 78% foul shooter. And he makes his first. Weston now with nine. Chattanooga had cut the lead down to one on a dunk from Silvio De Sosa. MTSU is led by as many as seven. And the lead goes to three now with 35 seconds left at 38-21. Ten points for Cameron Weston, the sophomore. About a five second difference here between the shot clock and the game clock. Caldwell goes cross court. Baptiste, the three, got it. David Jean Baptiste nailed. Final 10 seconds of the first half. Sims pulls up. The two pointer, got it. Donovan Sims. By Smith coming off a career high 36. And Chattanooga's loss to Murray State. Mox had 14 turnovers in that loss that kind of sealed their fate. While Murray State hit 11 three-pointers. Contact in the air, and there's the basket for DeAndre Dishman. Boy, and DeSosa, I don't, he got hit in the contact in the process. And that is a very aggressive way to get it started offensively. Straight to the rim, regardless of the bodies. You know, sometimes you gotta be a little fearless to play this game. Chattanooga will inbound, MTSU with a little pressure in the backcourt on Baptiste, guarded by Josh Jefferson. Boy, they get the three to end the half. Then they open up with something like that. Those are two big message senders. Smith tries to lob it underneath for DeSosa, nearly lost it, but able to save it, and he will sail it out of bounds now. 
AJ Caldwell didn't even give it a try. <laughs> There's something to be said for knowing some limits. Turnover number eight in the game for Chattanooga. You know, Chris, that baseline tonight, that's been a tough place to be in. Sims with a miss. Chattanooga lost it out of bounds, so MTSU will get it back. Played nearly a minute in this first half, or second half. And the lead for MTSU at five at 36-31. Jefferson, the lob to Dishman underneath. Chattanooga doubles on the player with the possession of the ball. And they can't get back in time to cover Dishman. Well executed offensive play. Short jumper by Banks, partially blocked. And Dishman getting it done on both ends. Scores the bucket on offense. Has the block on defense. And a seven point lead now for MTSU. Chattanooga had tied the game at 31 with 10 seconds left in the half. Smith hits a three, or Sims rather. Donovan Sims hits the three. Puts MTSU in front at the break and Lawrence with a long jumper that's off the mark. Chattanooga has yet to score in this second half. Malachi Smith draws the foul on his way to the rim. It has been tough sledding in the paint. Yeah, it really has. I mean, you can't go in there and be faint of heart. Smith will go to the line with a chance to shoot two. 36 points, six rebounds for Malachi Smith in Chattanooga's loss to Murray State. That is the most points scored in a game by a Chattanooga Mock since 2013. Smith now has six. Smith has seven, and the lead has been trimmed to five at 38-33. Two minutes gone, second half. MTSU still with the lead. Loose ball tipped away. DeSosa down the floor, and he has it taken away by Josh Jefferson. Sims. And it's out of bounds. MTSU will keep possession. The Sosa, he never got comfortable after getting the ball loose. And you know there's going to be pressure from the backside tonight. This game's at a, at a different speed for everybody. And Middle Tennessee State seems to be a little bit more adept at it. Caldwell rebounds Sims miss. De Sosa. Well, that's part of the game for Chattanooga tonight that has been missing. The Mocs have not been able to be uh, to match MTSU in the paint. Well, you know, they, the, the <laughs> MTSU suffered so poorly last year inside. This is a this is a transformation for this club. Again, we mentioned earlier they they went out and they got a bunch of transfers like everybody else is doing, and it's really paid off. And. Uh, you know, the one thing that they'll be looking to do this year is to avoid a game or a stretch or a season-long stall of development in their system and in their offense. Pull up three from Jefferson, and Ayeni rebounds. Smith. Well, that's the Southern Conference Player of the Week. F fans here have gotten accustomed to seeing. Nine points now for Malachi Smith, and it's a one-point lead for the Blue Raiders. He'll start to open up this floor if he continues to play that way. Dishman on Ianni. This has been a good battle. And Dishman will have to give it up to Sims with six on the shot clock. Over Smith. Rebounded, tipped out, and will get a foul called. This will go on Chattanooga's Josh Ianni. 
First personal foul on Ayeni. But a fresh shot clock for MTSU. Shot clock at six. Dishman drives, shoots, and we'll have a foul called on Chattanooga. Ayeni picks up his second personal foul. That is team foul number three on Chattanooga this half. And Dishman to the line with MTSU in front by a point. Dishman, a 63% foul shooter. Transfer from Eastern Kentucky. And this is a uh, Middle Tennessee State team that has a small advantage tonight at the free throw line. Dishman makes it a two-point game again at 39-37. MTSU has led the whole way. Their biggest lead has been seven. Haven't been able to push it over seven. Chattanooga's trimmed it down to one a couple of times, but the Mocs haven't been able to take the lead. Caldwell, Chattanooga tries to go baseline. I think he'd be offended if I asked for an omelet for Christmas? Well, probably not as much as if you asked to sit in his lap. <laughs> okay. <There's> Smith. <laughs> Malachi Smith is in double figures. He's got 11. We're tied at 39. Game was tied at 31 with 10 seconds left in the first half. Buford out there again. He has such good positional size. As we get another look at a, a sizable guy in Dishman who's going to check out. And uh, Buford out there wearing number four. Length, athleticism. Uh, and he has played so well both ends of the floor so far tonight. Well, Mal Malachi Smith runs right through a screen. And that'll draw a foul. Yeah, Smith and Leonard both went to the floor. They'll call the foul on Malachi Smith. That is team uh, personal foul number three on Smith, so he will come out. Malachi Smith leaves. He's given Chattanooga a little bit of a shot in the arm. After a quiet first half, finds himself now with double figures. He's got 11. And a game tied at 39. Weston drops it off underneath, and there's Fussell. Christian Fussell with a dunk. He's got four. And MTSU back in front. 41-39. They've led this game the whole way. They have not trailed. Chattanooga tied it at 31. And again at 39. Diggs trying to back his way down against Fussell. Turns. We're tied at 41. He likes that matchup. And I, I think for Middle Tennessee State, if they can get Dishman back out there, they'll have a little bit more success against Diggs. We saw it in the first half. Now Fussell's three is missed. Loose ball. Jefferson able to save it off the floor. And MTSU with a chance to set it back up again. Boy, Diggs is really emptying the tank tonight down there. Fussell underneath. Nice reverse layup. We talked about that positional size of Buford. Uses it to his advantage there. Justin Buford with the bucket. He's got three. MTSU back in front by a pair. David Jean Baptiste too hard. And the rebound tipped out. Mox with another look. There's the feed, and it's good. Darius Banks, first bucket of the game for Banks, and we're tied again at 43. 
Fussell. Chris, that is their ninth assist of a game, and they just seem to be getting better as this game wears on with regards to recognition. Caldwell tried the lob for Avery Diggs. I don't think Diggs was expecting the lob. He was thinking shot, was getting into rebound position. And he can see him right there. My bad, I thought you were going to shoot. There's just some spots on the floor tonight where it looks like at times Chattanooga hasn't matched up very well. Tyler Millen tries to go baseline, lost his handle, and it's out of bounds. MTSU will keep it. You know, they've, they've done a good job tonight of exposing Chattanooga's when there's help on the baseline, they've managed to find somebody cutting to the basket and give Middle Tennessee State credit. They realize when the ball goes baseline and the double goes down, they flash somebody into the paint. Weston pulls up over Caldwell. And Diggs will clear it underneath. Chattanooga with a chance to tie it or take the lead. And Caldwell goes down. We'll get a foul called. That will go against Josh Jefferson. Check that. It was Tiafael Leonard. Foul was called on 12, not 11. That's the third personal foul on Leonard. You know, for Leonard, when he came out of high school, he didn't get a lot of offers, so he took the Juco route, and, I, and after one year of play, I mean, the messages on his phone just piled up. And... Uh, he, all of a sudden, he became a very hot product. He's already been a freshman of the year in this league one time. I, I have a feeling he may do that again. He scored 12 earlier this year against Ole Miss. Fresh shot clock for Chattanooga. Three-pointer would give Chattanooga their first lead of the game. Smith back in playing with three fouls. Nice job by Lawrence defensively to cut off the baseline. And the foul will be called on MTSU's Eli Lawrence. Lawrence tripped up Malachi Smith. Yeah, you can see how Lawrence, if he becomes more efficient as a scorer, what kind of factor he could be to this team. Third personal foul on Eli Lawrence. Ten on the shot clock. Caldwell. Got it. Game tied at 45. A.J. Caldwell has seven. These two teams going back and forth with each other. They trade baskets. And a game tied at 45 with 11 and a half to go. Middle Tennessee State has answered every run. Weston. Oh, over back on the inbound. They didn't have a lot of size. Um, they just seemed to be going in the, the wrong direction. And uh, they have done a U-turn. It's interesting that they and Western Kentucky are up there in the top considering they both have a handful of transfers each. 30 points in the paint so far for MTSU. Chattanooga with a chance again to tie it or take the lead for the first time. Mox have trailed the entire game. Diggs in the paint, puts his defender on the floor. Uh, he did that against Fussell. They're going to let him do it against Dishman. And now that he knows that he can do this, I, I think you got to run some of the offense through him as much as possible. 
Oh, they waved, did they wave the points? Yeah, they points waved the were points. waved off, but A.J. Caldwell makes the basket, and Chattanooga ties the game again at 47. Caldwell has nine. Dishman over Diggs. <laughs> he is equally capable of, de of delivering a, a punishing physical offensive move. Dishman at 6'6", 235, going up against Avery Diggs, who's 6'10", and more than 235. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> He's given up some inches and some pounds. I don't know how much, but you're right, more. Whatever it is, it's more. Got to go here with the clock winding down. Four to shoot. Diggs not able to convert. Here comes MTSU. Weston with a lob. The layup. And you saw how quick Dishman reacted on that block. Great instinct, so quick off of his feet. And then the transition game. Baptiste has the three rattle out. Lead is at four for the Blue Raiders. Inside 10 minutes to go. Sims. The miss, rebound tipped. And it goes Chattanooga's way. We'll have a foul called on MTSU. I think that's Weston. And second, Chattanooga will inbound the basketball. The MTSU with a 51-47 lead. Under 10 to go as play resumes. Chattanooga's turned it over 12 times in this game. That has led to 16 points for MTSU. Underneath to Smith, Malachi Smith has 13. And Chattanooga closes to within two once again. Mox have tied the game numerous times, but they have never led. And there's the deny of the lob by Malachi Smith. A.J. Caldwell with a miss. This game was last tied at 47. And Baptiste, Chattanooga with a chance again. They can tie it, they can take a lead. Smith. And the rebound secured by Tyler Millen. Millen from three. Off the mark, there's Ieni, or DeSosa rather. It's Mox basketball. Last touch by Cameron Weston, so Chattanooga will keep it. We talked about it in the pregame. DeSosa's limited time the other night, and he's been limited again tonight. He only had 19 minutes. And he's just at 14 right now. This game has not seemed to suit him very well. David Jean Baptiste has yet to score in this second half for Chattanooga. He had 13 at halftime. He's still sitting on 13. Malachi Smith with 13. Fussell right there in DeSosa just trying to fight through the body and get to the ball. We had mentioned uh, previously that Middle Tennessee State has the slight advantage at the free throw line. And now I'm getting the feeling that this is gonna be a tight game that will require you to make some of those shots. Silvio De Sosa, 67% foul shooter. Changed the shoes at the half. Uh, that's a good look. I'll, yeah, I wasn't wasn't sure about the first first pair, but what do I know? Well, you know, you have a rough night. That's the key, Todd. You have a rough You're, half, you change yeah, shoes. Change I, no, shoes at halftime. He's not the only Don't one. Don't you do that? <laughs> you ever look around and I'm not here? <laughs> the Sosa's second, good. He's got six. And we're tied again at 51. Eight minutes left to go. Chattanooga and MTSU. It's been a close game the whole way. There's the turnover as Dishman made the pass and nobody was home. Yeah, a little miscommunication. I got to believe that when you're playing on that half of the court in front of your coach offensively, maybe just somebody didn't get the right play call.
Jamal Walker for the lead, got it. Chattanooga has their first lead of the game. 54-51, the first basket for Jamal Walker. Lawrence, the miss. Now we had mentioned before that Malachi's numbers, sometimes they come, you know, all at once. And he didn't have a great first half, but he's turned it on here in the second. It's a 9-0 run for Chattanooga. Mox trailed 51-47 with 9.47 to go. Now here we are just over two minutes later and they lead by five. And a foul called on Silvio De Sosa yeah. of Chattanooga. So sometimes the best defense is played before the guy has the ball. And um, De Sosa that time just fighting through the body. Good call by the official there. The MTSU playing from behind for the first time. Buford's three. And a big rebound by Darius Banks. Banks has had a rough time offensively tonight for Chattanooga. Only two points, but a big rebound with a mox up five here, under seven to play. East Tennessee State, they haven't found the cutter lately. You know, normally they draw the double team and they drop it off to somebody. Smith. Five to shoot now. Smith over Weston. And the rebound ends up back in the hands of Chattanooga. That's just very good hustle by Walker. <laughs> We're scrambling to save this possession. Shot clock again, down to five. Here's Banks back out to Smith. Catch and shoot three, and he got it. The open shooter. The guy's cutting to the basket, and that hasn't been there. And I don't know if Chattanooga's taken it away completely or if Middle Tennessee State just hasn't recognized it with the same degree of success that they did earlier. Oh, boy, they're going to get to Sosa for a hip. I don't know. Uh, I just thought maybe Sims lost his, his tread. Watch right here. Uh, it's caught it a little late, but I don't know. It's one of the few I would question tonight. Otherwise, other than that, I think the three guys, the officials here tonight, have had a pretty good handle on this game. Three fouls on Silvio De Sosa to go along with six points. Seven to shoot. Dishman shoots over De Sosa and scores. That will snap the drought for MTSU. Blue Raiders hadn't scored since the 9.47 mark. They had gone four minutes between baskets in this second half. A 12-0 run for Chattanooga has put the Mox in front. And now here's the turnover and a chance for MTSU to cut into the lead. Lawrence and Malachi Smith rebounds. Six point advantage for Chattanooga as we approach five minutes to play. David Jean Baptiste. Boy, the bench had been sorely outscored in the first half, and they've kind of helped ignite some of this offense. Although it's hard to tell tonight with Chattanooga who's the bench and, who's, and, and, and who the starters are, right? Lamont Paris went to his bench early in this game. Dishman. Blocked by De Sosa. Another block by Silvio De Sosa. He had 15 coming into this game. No one else on the Chattanooga roster had more than three. Smith to De Sosa underneath. Gets his own rebound. Shot clock down to five. Smith. Lost it going up, 
Chattanooga will maintain possession. Two seconds left on the shot clock. Blue Raiders, fantastic job of scrambling back to their defensive assignments. Took away three open looks. A bucket by Chattanooga would push the lead into double digits. Baptiste at the buzzer. Got it! 12. Well, Middle Tennessee State had survived every run up until right now. Jefferson's three, got it. Three points, Josh Jefferson. 65-56 now with under four minutes to go. And your Middle Tennessee State, you gotta roll the dice here now. They're gonna be aggressive defensively. Chattanooga has to look for the overplay here. Caldwell, hey, got the job done, right? That's right. Caldwell second. Good, A.J. Caldwell hits both free throws. He's got 11, and the Chattanooga lead is at 11, 67-56. This is a precarious lead for Chattanooga. Middle Tennessee State has shown tonight that their outside game has been deadly. Jefferson has it rim out. Look at the rebound by Leonard. Boy, he skied to get that rebound. Here's Weston. Caldwell with a big rebound for Chattanooga. Three minutes left. Box in front by 11. Just want to extend that defense a little bit. And as you do it, you want to make sure you cover your backside. Baptiste once more. Twenty-two points for Gene Baptiste, and the lead goes to fourteen for Chattanooga. The Mox had never led in this game until there was seven and a half to go. Tyler Miller, his shot is missed. And the foul will go on A.J. Caldwell, and this will send MTSU to the line to shoot the one and one. Tiafael Leonard. Yeah, Todd, you've touched on Leonard a couple of times tonight, averaging seven points a game. Just a 42% foul shooter, but boy, has this guy got some hops. He really does. I had mentioned his journey. You know, didn't get a lot of looks out of high school. You know, Went to the JUCO route, then got an offer from Tulsa and uh, ends up at Middle Tennessee State. But he proved himself at another level, grew a little bit, and then everybody wanted to, to, to uh, offer him an opportunity to play. Boy, is that the Sosa down on the blocks clearing out, thinking he's going to get a rebound? That is four on DeSosa. DeSosa with four, Malachi Smith now with three. You know, Outs when I, outside of that, Chattanooga in pretty good shape as Tyler Millen goes to the free throw line. Well, that's a big miss. You had a chance to add more points without the clock running. This is, we talked about the overplay, so you're gonna see traps. You just have to, Make sure that you keep your head up. And this is where you want to protect the ball with your body. Is If it's on the ground, it's in danger. As long as you got two hands on it and you're just moving it quickly, you should be all right with it. Fourth personal foul on Cameron Weston. And David Jean Baptiste goes to the line. He'll shoot two. Baptiste now with 23 in this game. Second from Baptiste. He hits both. 
And it's a 72-58 lead for Chattanooga. Weston with a bump and a basket. MTSU with some pressure. But not able to control it, and so UTC will maintain possession. 12-point lead for Chattanooga, inside two to play. Now they're looking to see who the ball went off of. So this officiating crew, again, they will gather around the scorer's table and make a determination. Uh, they've been busy tonight. 33 whistles, four on Weston, four on DeSosa. They got Caldwell and Smith with three. Watch right here. So we're looking at what they're looking at. That's, that's as tight as the three-pointer we saw earlier. Yeah. With David Jean Baptiste. Yeah, this crew of Garrick Shannon, Davis Maxwell, Darren Williams, they've had their hands full. They sure have. Uh, we said that, you know, this game, I, didn't, I just didn't think that a 12-point lead would be enough, and it might not be. And they are, they are going to give it to Middle Tennessee State. So MTSU gets it back. This will, well, this Chattanooga crowd, again, we mentioned the fact that it's a, a good crowd for both sides that have packed in here tonight, but Chattanooga crowd a little quiet early as their team trailed. Well, they've gotten a little more excitement here in the second half. Leonard from three. And the rebound off the floor by Malachi Smith. And there comes the foul. Blue Raiders foul number 12. Uh, well, look, they've, they've, they have turned Chattanooga over 14 times tonight. They came into this game with that reputation, and they have lived up to it. They have, uh, they're number 30 in the nation coming into this game in forced turnovers. They're number three in their league numbers right now. And... Um, they are so aggressive. They play with wonderful length. Two 20-point scores tonight for Chattanooga. And David Jean Baptiste with 22. Malachi Smith has 20. Weston has four fouls. Now Leonard has four fouls. And again, back to the free throw line. You're trying to put away a team that just won't go away. 13-point lead for Chattanooga. Minute 40 remains. And there's a loose ball and a steal by DeSosa. And a hard foul. This will go on Josh Jefferson. And Malachi Smith will go back to the free throw line. Good heads up play by Silvio DeSosa to come away with a steal. I like how when Middle Tennessee State traps, one guy gets the body, the other guy's going for the ball. You know, we talked about it a little earlier, Todd, the, the fact that this MTSU team picked 14 out of 14 teams yeah. in Conference USA. I think the folks in Conference USA are going to be a little bit surprised. They might be. Yeah, exactly. I, <laughs> I'm looking forward to catching them play some more of their games this year. UAB picked to finish first. Head coach Andy Kennedy there has done a, done a good job of the Blazers. Louisiana Tech second. Western Kentucky was third and Marshall was fourth. By the way, Western Kentucky, they're playing the University of Kentucky tonight in Lexington. 
Yeah, you, you know, you mentioned UAB. We're talking about the transfers. They got eight. Yeah. And they're still picked number one in the league. You would think that some people would look at that and question whether or not they could be that good with eight new players on the floor. 15-point lead for Chattanooga, and there's an MTSU turnover. Blue Raiders are coming undone late. Here's Banks! <laughs> 17 points, and Darius Banks with the exclamation. Fussell. Nice shot. Christian Fussell. Fussell has nine. We've got less than a minute to go. MTSU will not foul, and so David Jean Baptiste just going to dribble it down. It's about 22 seconds, maybe, between the shot clock and the game clock, and Baptiste lost it. Here comes Weston all the way down. He'll drop it down. 77 65, and now Chattanooga can just dribble this game out. Cameron Weston will finish with 16. Well, what a night for Malachi Smith and David Jean Baptiste of Chattanooga. Mox trailed by as many as seven before they finally took their first lead with 739.